As the sycamore's leaves return, the lush green will complement the willow branches and change the look of Patrick's sculpture, the upper crest. Sticks are lines with which to draw, and so there's a drawing quality to the surface that really carries the weight and the illusion of the pieces. In other words, uh, sticks are tapered, so if you organize the tapers in one direction, you have a kind of sense of movement as though you might strike a, the paper with one weight and then finish off with another. So this kind of mark making uh, is, and all the, the things you might know about drawing, you can apply to the surfaces of these pieces. As we started working, we started seeing that one tree couldn't bear the weight. We were going to have to go to two trees. We were going to have to have pieces twice as big as what we thought. So rather than being able to make 12 smaller pieces, we had to make six giant pieces. The trees are pollarded each December, and then they're bare for a certain amount of time, and then the limbs come back on. So one of the things that I wanted to do just generally would be to have something that protruded above uh, the you know, these uh, limbs as they come back on in the spring. You've always got wind and weather. You'd have to build something that was structurally sound, a kind of a conical form. You get a lot of height out of it with very little weight. You know, it had been my hope that we would do this interview with you outside in the plaza so we could sort of scan the, uh, you know, the work in progress. But uh, overall, how has been the experience of, of working in San Francisco been for you? Working in the weather is, is always interesting, and um, we've been in the rain for the last three days. We just kind of persevere. Uh, we want to get this piece made. We want to use everybody's best energy in, in getting it complete. So we've been out there and, uh, eight hours a day with my four assistants, and we've been just working hard, moving the scaffolding around, trying to keep the public safe and not drop anything on them. And um, it's been great. I've really enjoyed myself. How do you actually build one of these structures? Shaping those saplings into the forms that you want is a very physically demanding exercise, right? It's basically a layering process, and I'll start out with a structural base. In this case, I took some really large saplings, and I wove them into the trunk of the, uh, to the upper limbs, the basket of the sycamores. Not just the outer limbs, but the trunk of the tree, because I want to carry all the weight down onto the trunk. Once I, I get a kind of a few structural pieces in there, I'll make a structural layer. And that means that I make sticks go all different directions. I get a shape that I like that's st structurally sound. Then I'll decide that I'm going to layer on top of that. I'm going to add an aesthetic. I'm really going to draw on top of that uh, structural base. So I start adding lines in certain ways that I think look good. And then finally, you go back and do fix up. And it's kind of a racing. You take and put little sticks that don't seem to count very much on top of things you don't like, and you, you basically cover the blemish. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of a, a layering process all along, and then a kind of a fix-up until you've got something that you really think that, uh, looks beautiful and fits its space and, and has the necessary scale to hold its own against the noise, against all the other activities there. Um, and, you know, against just the large amount of space that, that uh, constitutes the front of, of City Hall. Unlike most sculptors who work in steel or metal or, or stone, uh, materials that have an opportunity and a tendency to last for centuries, you've made a very conscious decision to use, you know, very uh, organic material. And, and very often your sculptures are quite ephemeral. They, they, they have a very finite lifetime. Well, at most you get two years. Maybe I always say you get one good year, one pretty good year. And, uh, but I, uh, one of the advantages of having been willing to do temporary sculpture and give the space back is that you're li I'm allowed to use many pivotal spaces that weren't really identified as for a sculpture to be placed in. Say someone's lobby, they can't have some, something that's going to last that long. They just need a temporary work. And so uh, over the years, I've been able to capitalize on all these great spaces, all these unlikely spaces. And, you know, it's made these great opportunities. It's great opportunities for me and, and for me to participate in the world of ideas, but also to have a, an enormous interaction with the public and really find many starting points for my work in this conversation that's ensued 
by doing temporary work in public spaces. I always feel like a good sculpture is one that causes lots of personal associations in the viewer. And so we've been hearing about bird nests people have known. We hear about childhood play. We hear about indigenous tribes. Uh, you know, we get stopped and told about the favorite tree. <laughs> and uh, generally what it brings to mind is uh, how important parks are uh, to uh, an urban a dweller, how important it is to be able to go out and for just a minute be free and have sky to look at and have growing things to look at. As those, as the, the trees, the sycamores, you know, sort of begin to grow into this structure, um, it really will alter the whole look and feel of, of, of the site, won't it? It really will, and I like, I like temporary work in a way uh, you have to enjoy it while it's there. But on the other hand, uh, the atmospherics that surround it, the winds, the, the changing light, the growth of the trees, they all change the feeling of the piece and, and they uh, build a kind of drama into the, uh, the time that you have it in that site, you know, the, the, your viewing time there. The upper crust is part of Mayor Newsom's plan to revitalize the public space in front of City Hall, featuring community festivals on weekends, new seating, and a coffee service during the week. The Civic Center is the perfect place to relax and enjoy the upper crust. To view more of Patrick's sculptures, visit stickwork.net. You'll find highlights from the past 25 years of Patrick's career.